Sorry about that. My uh, phone Sh camera shut off, so I don't I don't know what I missed. But I have the eggs, and I'm ready to start making the. What you want to use is you want to use a blade that does not have a serrated edge. Okay, so use a blade without a serrated edge. So, I'm going to wipe up a little bit of water there. I have this knife, and this will work fine. So, because what you don't want is you don't want the ridges on the egg. So you want a nice clean cut. And then, because the knife that you use is going to get yolk on it, you want to wipe the yolk off every egg so you don't get yolk on the outside of the egg. And it should just fall out like that. We need another little tissue for There's a little bit of water in here from the eggs. We'll wipe that up. And if you've screwed up your eggs like I have, <laughs> they're going to taste good, but I got a big chunk there. I'm going to put that chunk on the bottom. So, you need a nice clean knife, nice clean cut. I'm putting the chip on the bottom so it doesn't get seen. Hopefully. <laughs> it's going to be hard to miss that one, though. Come on, there. And get these little tray things wiped dry. Uh oh, I ripped it. Awesome. Get out. Sometimes you just can't get it right. Sometimes. Hey, yeah, these eggs are very chippy. And I'm very disappointed in my deviled eggs today. But they they're still gonna taste delicious. That's that's the most important thing. So I'm not even sure where to cut this one. Who knows? Who knows where I should cut it? And this right there will work. It doesn't turn out too bad, I suppose. It's got some real big chunks in it. But the good thing is, these eggs are not overcooked. And that's what is a good thing right there. Because overcooked eggs always have that grainy kind of coating on the outside of the yolk. So there's no green on these. But they're chippy. It's pretty good they got chips in them. Okay. Oh, there's a lot of water in there. Oh no. I sure did do that. Where's wrong band? This one's not too bad. For chips. So we got a little bit on that one side, so we'll just cut it right here and let it go on the bottom. See, it's very thin on this side. Oh, there we go. Not very thin on that side. Perfect. Yes. All right. You know. Sometimes they'll come out with so much on one side that I actually cut a little bit out sometimes. So I'm going to do that to that one because it's just got such a big chunk of egg right there. And I'm going to do it to this the other half as well. Big chunk of egg out there. Rip right, please. Well, I've ruined that one now, too. Yeah, these are not good. These are not good. I mean, they're going to taste fine, but they're not looking very pretty. I might be able to fix the way they look. But they try to pull them out, it's just going to fall apart on them. So beware. Be careful pulling those out of there. I 
and this one just tore too. Gosh darn, can I get one to not tear? Just one. <laughs> They're all tore. All tore up, all of them. There we go. Tore up from the floor up. Okay. It's right there. It was already there. It's cut right through it. Got on both mounts. I'm struggling lately. I really am. Trying hard and not succeeding. Not sure where to cut this one. Yeah, right there, I think. They're going to taste delicious. That's what's in I don't know if people know this, but eggs are not something you should feed a baby right away. Um, a lot of babies are allergic to eggs. Um, and start slow on the eggs and then build it up, you know. There's that little tidbit of information. Like, you know, if your kids never had an egg, don't just make them a bunch of scrambled eggs and sit it in front of them and say, have at it, kid, because you don't know if they're allergic. I'm mumbling and I apologize because I'm talking about a sensitive subject. I love eggs <laughs> and I know where it comes from, but and I, I eat chicken, I eat hamburger, I eat meat, but I could very easily be a vegetarian and be okay with it. <laughs> Except for the eggs and the dairy products. I like all that. Like, I don't think a dairy product would should be considered a mix A because the cow is producing it where you're not hurting the cow. The cow is supposed to have it milked. I'm trying to think of what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to need a spoon for that and that. And that should be good. Okay, so I'm going to put a little salt in there. I'm going to put some pepper in there. And we are going to put... Um, Paprika for sure, and some parsley on top. Okay. Parsley in, or paprika in. This is sweet relish. I don't let the little red pimentos get in there. Of that. 
and mayo. Mayo, mayo. Mm, we'll start with that much. Okay, bit of ranch. Much. A little bit of pickle juice. And some mustard. Come. No, mm -mm. this is not going to fly. Yeah. Okay, I am making one, two, three, four more eggs. This is going in the fridge for now. But no, mm -mm. look at this. Look what I've done. Just things to start working out right now. I'm going to fix it, though. It's going to be fixed. That's not thick enough. Look how thin that is. Okay, so we're going to add four more yolks to this. Yeah, so we're, we're going to hard boil four more eggs. Oh, I made a two in there. Keep that cold water good and going. And we're going to just get these right on the stove. this isn't going to work. I got to fix it. We're going right from the fridge to the pan. It's not something normally you should do, but if you have your water cold enough, it's, it'll be fine. About a half inch from the top of the egg. And get this rolling. Five, five, five. So on high, after you put the eggs on the stove, then the burner goes on. And don't mind my burner, it's a piece of shit. I saved these for my sister. She does have chickens. <laughs> so, I take some cardons out there, she'll fill them up for me. <laughs> but yeah, this will just go in the fridge until it's... Um, Till the rest of the eggs is caught up. So, yeah, I'm really struggling. I'm telling you, I don't know why I'm struggling so bad. Every little thing I do. Every little step I take. Let's see how it tastes, though. Mm -hmm. Four more yolks and it'll be all good. Hopefully those four yolks will... Fix it for me. Yeah, it's it's good. It's fine. They're delicious. I'm still going to use those. Oh, this can go back in the fridge. I'm almost out of that. I think I have another jar in the pantry, but if I don't, I'll just buy more. That's it. That is a staple in my house. And I like a dill too, but I just don't, not as often. Cellophane. Yes, of course. Oh my goodness. This thing is really, I'm not buying this cheap stuff. The, the, the issue is, is the cellophane is remarkable. It's thick and it sticks well. It just comes in a crappy ass box. You know, they fix the box a little bit. They're going to sell a lot more of this product because the plastic itself is high quality and thus far I've been using this for years and not had this kind of trouble with these boxes so you know they had to lower their cost somewhere it's not like we're not all paying for the 2020 because we are they aren't they're raising their prices and lessening the product 
right? So I'm just going to move on with um, the other stuff until these eggs get out. Okay, so where, what do I, what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do these grapes right here. green grapes and they are delicious. Mm. Oh, I missed my garbage can. those out right away. Where well, those ruin the whole batch of grapes. So I'm thinking about making um, kind of a play on a fruit salad. Maybe making some um, tarts type of thing. You know, make those little tarts. I don't know. I'll think about it. They have a bad stem in here. Cut in. Soft. Soft. I can see that they look. Look how big they are, too. They're just huge. And they're so delicious. so big. Think about that. Oh, I've never seen a grape so big. You ever seen a grape so big? <laughs> it's huge. That's just like the where the cold frosty is on there. So not worry about that, because when I rinse them that'll all come off. Soft. Oh no! <laughs> I threw the sticks in here instead of the grape. Unfortunately. Yeah, my nose is out of control. So I keep having to pause you to blow my nose. It went all the way down. It sure enough did. Great. 
lips here. Oh, that one looks so good. Okay, I gotta eat this one. This one looks delicious. Oh, no, no. Ow! This screwed up my brakes. Maybe if I just leave the cold water running on it for a minute. Oh, look at that. Wow. Different tasting. I just ran hot water over my grapes, believe it or not. over them for a sec. Grab me a towel. Oh, I do have a washcloth. Yay. Grab myself a towel. And get these dried up. Right off. All the grapes are going to fit in here, but we will give it a shot. It didn't dry it up, but you can. Grapes don't like to dry very well. They always still have that shiny, I'm wet look to them. <laughs> I'm still wet, I'm still wet. Just a couple of little stems that I missed. You don't want to press down on them. You don't want to bruise them. You want to just be very gentle with them. I'm going to put a layer of paper towel on the bottom. And hopefully layer these in and have them all fit. They're just so big, I don't think they will fit. <laughs> big ones on the bottom, I suppose. Bigger ones on the bottom. This one's a little soft. many as I can on that bottom row. Still a couple more. Right there. Right there. And one right there. Perfect. I'm going to put another layer. I always double up the paper towel on the grapes because they always have so much more moisture on them when I put them away because they don't dry very well. And I'm not sure I'm going to fit all these. starting to boil. I, I don't dare touch anything with the stove. So mad about that. It's just, it was so uncool what Abby did me like that. Oh, you need to get a new stove. And then I get in here and start cooking going, this isn't new. And all I was looking at was the burners, right? I said, this isn't new. This couldn't possibly be new. And so then I lifted up to clean it and realized, oh, it is new. The wires underneath were, and it was just brand spanking new underneath there. And I pop it down, look at the burners again, and there's no way these are new. And so yeah, I got screwed on that deal. I don't, I'm not sure if Lindsay even gonna pop one on this one. No, and I need a bigger boat. Let me find a bigger boat. Put my timer on, they're boiling. Five minutes. All right, I didn't find a bigger boat. But I found a second boat. Fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine, they say. Okay, there's that one. 
Get another lid. I'm missing like two, two of these. I have no idea what happened to them. My shit just disappears all the time. And then we woke up this morning, my husband was like, uh, the door's unlocked. I said, really? I wonder how that happened, since you were the last one in. I could have gotten up in the middle of the night and opened it for some fresh air, not remembered, absolutely. I don't know. All right, so. I will be back when those eggs are ready to be done. And it's not boiling now. It's, why? Why don't you stop boiling? I'm pissing me to fuck off. Boil that shit right now. Ah, $400 for the burners and only a thousand for the stove. They better buy me some new fucking burners. I'm, I'm going to break the lease and get the fuck out. I'm not, no, not doing this anymore. I'm so frustrated with that. So, so frustrated. It's terrible. It's not right how they did me like that. You know, buy a new stove and take the burners for their own stove. I don't think you have the right to do that. You know, but they, they make everybody else follow the rules to the T. But they can break them all the time. Her husband's out here looking through mailboxes one night. I sat and stood out there and watched him. Then he saw me and he was like, oh. Really? They know I know. He saw me watching him. And then they're gonna do this to me. And guess what else they've done? They've asked me for a $700 pet deposit. I said, <laughs> where'd the pet deposit go from the other apartment? Oh, that had to be used. I said, really, after seven years of living there? On a used carpet that is over 10 years old, and you're gonna charge me for that carpet? No, no, no. Yeah, because you know I know the rules. Let me explain carpets in apartment buildings. Heed my words, because they will try to charge you. You will have to fight for your right. Stopping to boil again, and it's got a minute left still. Wow. Um, anyways, so when, when an apartment complex buys a carpet and puts it, installs it in the apartment and rents an apartment out, when the carpet is brand new, if that person ruins that carpet, they're going to pay 100% of the price. The carpet depreciates and depletes its value every year. It's in service. A carpet has a 10-year life you're gonna get charged pretty much 100% for that whole first year if you ruin that carpet. Then the second year comes and it goes down a little bit and the third year down a little more, down a little more, down a little more, right? If you move into an apartment and that carpet is already 10 years old, the only thing they can charge you for is to clean it. And it doesn't matter what they do to it. If they replace it, if they dye it, if they just clean it, all you can be charged is a cleaning fee. And if the manager's nice, because it is 10, 11 years old, she won't even charge you that. Oh no, that's that's an old carpet and that's, um, it was damaged already when you moved in, died, cleaned is all. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave that on for just a second because guess what, it's not doing, look at, do you see where I have the burner? It's on high. That's barely boiling, barely. So my 555 method is out the door with this bullshit. I'm gonna let it boil for one more minute. And uh, so yeah, so, um, and anywhere in between. If a carpet costs $1,500 to put into that apartment and you live there for six months and move and you, the carpet's destroyed and they have to replace it again, you're gonna pay that whole $1,500. You need to take care of the carpets, absolutely. Um, but 
when you move into an apartment and the carpet is already 10 years old, and then you charge me a $700 pet deposit, and I know I had to pay for that door. My dog damaged that door. I'm more than willing to take it out of that pet deposit and pay for that door. What I'm not willing to do is pay for the pet damage on the carpet. That was already 10 years old when I moved in. And I lived there for seven years. I, she goes, oh. Uh, I'm like, so um, you need to transfer at least four, minimum of 400 of that pet deposit into this apartment. And I'll make arrangements for the other $300 but I don't appreciate being charged when you have fought me tooth and nail for me to even keep my dog. She sent me a letter saying, you don't have a pet deposit. I sent her a letter back with a copy of Lee saying, yes, I do. Then she sent me a letter saying, we only take, we only take um, support animals. Not just a regular pet can live here. It has to be a support pet. I said, he is. Well, we need paperwork on that. I said, it's in my file. I don't see it. I said, well, let me find it. I'll make a copy and bring it to you. And I didn't do it. I said, you know what? Fuck that bitch, right? And so then I got another letter saying, uh, either get rid of your dog or produce the paperwork. Like some bit. So I look and look. I find the paperwork. I send, copy it and send it over to her. Well, there you go. And then... My dog was apparently going across the street next to her apartment and pooping in the grass next to her apartment, and I was not picking it up. Does that sound like me? Does that really sound like me? No. First of all, my dog doesn't go across the street, period, unless I'm with him and checking the mail. And then we're right back across on this side. So then, after that didn't fly, Oh, I, I made a video and sent it to her boss. And I said, are you kidding me? I got this letter. And now I'm walking down the stairs. And I said, now I want to show you something. And I walked down the stairs all the way across the street. And I said, look at these piles of shit over here on this yard. Not one of these belong to my dog. However, her and her dog and her husband bring the do their dog outside right next to the building here all the time and I've never once seen him pick it up. So is it me? No, sir, it's not. And I don't appreciate being accused of stuff that me and my dog ain't doing. So she is borderlining harassing it, me. And, um, you know, I'm going to do something about it. I won't be moving, but I'll be doing something about it. So yeah, she kind of backed off. I guess the management company called her and said, back off. She knows. Do you, have, do you know she was a property manager for 10 years? She knows the rules. She knows exactly what you're doing. So knock it off. I don't want your job. I'm not trying to take your job. Are you kidding me? This place is 40 units. 40. The, lo the minimum units I ever managed was 177 up to three, four, five hundred units. I don't do 40 unit properties. I'm not a half-assed working person. When I work, I would do it all the way. So, yeah, so then, it, then I got behind on my rent with the COVID, right? And, well, I tell you, the second she could serve me, she did, I was one month behind, one. <clears throat> In 2021, I was one month behind. Not for the whole year, but just the first couple of months. And she's like, ding, there it is. Pay your pay now or move. So, and I'll give you a, a tip on, on that. Um, it used to be a three-day pay or vacate. I believe they've changed it to a 14-day. I don't know if it's a pay or vacate or just a vacate. I've never received one of those notices. But at the top of any failure to... Uh, um, comply with the lease or you're too loud or your dog barks too much or whatever the problem is you're behind on your rent whatever the problem is if you get a notice and at the top of that notice it says either three day notice to comply with lease or three day pay or vacate 
mostly the payer vacates. Okay, so now the law has changed in the Washington state. It's now 14 days. Now, if that's a payer vacate or just a vacate, I don't know because um, I haven't looked it up yet. But you get a notice at, and at the top it says pay or vacate. What's that say? What's that say? Does it say pay and vacate? Pay and stay? No. Pay or, or vacate. So if you vacate, guess what? You don't have to pay because of the wording on the notice. <clears throat> so, however, and, so let's just say one, just take one example and apply this example to pretty much any notice, right? It's going to say at all on it, first of all. And if it doesn't say at all, it's not filled out properly. It's going to be written E-T-A-L, at all. And that means everyone else and all included. So if they give you a notice, because your name's on the lease, but you have 10 people living here, it applies to all 10, as long as it says at all. Now, if it doesn't say at all, it only applies to you. There's that, okay? The other thing, okay, so we're done with the five sit, and we're gonna go with the five cold and hope for the best on these eggs. Oh, I'm gonna be mad if they're not right. I'm gonna be mad if they're not right. So, Run them under some cold water and let them sit for five minutes. That's your third five right there. You want to probably, you know, change the water out to colder water here in a minute or so. So anyways, the other thing is, um, okay, so the at all, we did the at all, right? Okay, so the other thing is, it says three day pay or vacate, where by law, they have to allow five. Why? For mailing, they have to post it to your door and mail it to you. If you don't get it on your door and in the mailbox, it was not served properly, it's null and void. Okay, so they put it in the mail, they post it to your door and they put it in the mail. The mailing takes five days, so they legally have to wait those five days before they start doing anything. You think, oh, they're busy, they're not. They're not paying attention to me. They forgot they gave me, no, no, they're waiting their time. Okay, now, if you can't pay that rent and you want to get out from underneath at least the port, the large rent portion of that bill, say you have late fees and stuff like that on there, right? Um, pack your shit and get the fuck out in three days, 72 hours. If you are knocking on that door in 72 hours, handing her the key, say, well, we vacated, have a nice life. You don't have to pay. It's pay or vacate. You vacate, you don't pay. You pay, you don't vacate. It's the wording. Now, these new 14 days, it could be just a 14 day vacate because you broke the rules and we don't want you here. I don't know. And the laws are different in different cities. If you live in, in the city of Seattle, they have to have a reason to, to evict you from an apartment. If you live outside the city limits of Seattle, Renton, Kent, Auburn, any of those type of cities, they can vacate. You. They can ask you to vacate for no reason at all. 30-day notice to leave because we don't like the way you smile. They don't have to have a reason. They don't have to give you a reason. So if you get one of those, just start looking for another pace and get the fuck out because it's not going to go your way. The laws are geared towards the rent, the tenants. Um, the laws are geared towards the management company, but they're in favor of the tenant. So read it very carefully. Um, if it has RCW, look that RCW up so you can understand that law. And uh, yeah, so it's um, when I was a property manager, it was a three-day pay or vacate. I would post it on the fifth because you had five grace period days to pay the rent. That notice cannot come out until after that grace period, right? Your late fees can't be assessed until after that grace period. So if you have until the 5th to pay your rent and you don't come up with it on the 5th, ask if you can pay a partial payment and let them know, communicate with them, and then keep your word. If you say, you know, I know today's the 5th, I have 700 and I know my rent's 850, um, I, it, I'm going to be able to pay the 850 on the 16th and I know I'm going to get some late fees. So if you could tell me how much that is, I will also pay that on the 16th 
and then pay it on the 16th. Don't let it go past that date. You chose that date. So, uh, or pack up and move if you can't afford the apartment because you're just going to get further and further behind. And, you know, like the money that my husband and I have made um, w when I was working was absolutely enough to own a home, take care of it, and pay for it, and no problems. I don't want to. I don't want to own a home because I don't want to be responsible when my life goes to shit. So you know, imagine if we owned a home right now and didn't have it paid for. You think we would have been able to keep that home and pay that pe huge power bill and the huge gas bill and the huge water sewer garbage bill and all that? Hell, fucking no. The last house we were in, our power, gas, electric, whatever, it was like. $500 a month, five, $600 a month. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. We got to get out of this house. This is bullshit. But, you know, and uh, a little bit of a crumb poking out from underneath this dish. And it's kind of pissing me off. And the more I turn it, the more I can see. I don't know what that is. So, anyway, we're going to add some more cold water. And it's five minutes to up so we can start peeling these and see how these are going to peel. Hopefully better than the last ones there. Hopefully. I hope they're done too. Not that they're peeling any better. Well, maybe. They're still a little warm. I normally peel them when they're warm because I think they peel better when they're warm. Kidding me, really? They're not peeling them on either. And I hope they're done. I'm really mad at that stove. So I've been writing a work order up, and I want to make sure I get everything on the work order. Like, um, if you could have him come pull this refrigerator out and move my freezer shelf, that'd be awesome does that puts a refrigerator in it doesn't adjust the shelves properly right so we've had our ups and downs and I believe this also was a scam getting us in this apartment because I don't I don't think she could have rented this apartment to anybody else this apartment is a piece of shit and they're not willing to fix anything well I got 25% of the water going up to the shower head so the majority of it just goes down the sink or down the drain. Um, underneath the kitchen sink leaks and leaks and leaks and I've tried to fix it and tried to fix it. Just keeps loosening up and leaking. I don't know. Stove, it's a piece of crap. Well, I don't want to say it's a piece, it's brand new with old burners on it. It's enough to piss anybody off. And yes, that one chipped. And they feel a little soft. They may be a slightly undercooked to be mad if they are and it's because of the damn stove I'm so mad this one just, the membrane is not breaking on these eggs and my thumb is raw now because it's putting sharp normally it's not like that when you're peeling big huge chunks of the shell off it doesn't give you these little shards gosh dang membrane sticking how the word moist kind of drives people crazy. The word membrane drives me crazy. That call it what it is, right? Or don't call it at all. Tiny bit. Yes, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Peeling eggs. That was too much with the, with the way the other ones went. And these better be done or I'm going to be so mad. Uh, I might call her. If these, aren't, if these aren't perfect, I might call her and say, okay, I'm done. I, am, I want new burners immediately. Huh. And 
And I know darn well what you did, so you don't even have to ask me what's wrong with them. You know what's wrong with them. They were on your stove three months ago. No damn well that's what she did. So I'm just going to dry these. Okay, we're good now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm just going to set them right here on this paper towel. I'm going to get these in the rest of the double take. Again. Okay. And hopefully this will work out for the best. I was thinking I was going to pipe it. I think I might pipe it in. Pipe it on the end of the eggs. You know, it kind of always makes it look better. But I don't know. I don't have, I don't have, I can't find my piping guy. But I still have all my attachments, like, things in here. So, um, I was looking for that little flower one. Scissors just don't have any sharpness to them. Left, I'm gonna poke it. be a full tray. Twill it twill. Better be thick enough. <laughs> These better be perfect. And they are. for it didn't cut right. What the heck? That's weird. Look at that. Look how perfect that is. Let's see the back. Let's see what the back of the yolk looks like. Isn't that perfect? No green. Don't want green. All right. I might be very happy with how these turn out, actually. You know when you're messing up on something and you go to fix it, can't get it fixed? That's frustrating. But if you can fix it, it just feels so good. It's like, yes, I did it, I fixed it. <laughs> and i am got my hopes up on here. Let's see what happens if I get it in here. Yeah, perfect. Oh my gosh. If it's overcooked, if it's anything, it's overcooked by 30 seconds, maybe. Yeah, that's, that looks perfect. All right. That's, I think, that's what I'm going to call it. Overcooked by 30 seconds. Not bad. I still... I don't like those damn burners at all. I need to be thrown away.
What the heck? There's another little piece right there where it didn't come all the way. Fuck. It smells good. It smells very good. One more egg to cut. It's a lot of deviled eggs. The whole container full. Eight, twelve, eighteen. No, eight. Nine, ten, twenty. Yep, there was twenty in there. That's a lot of deviled eggs. But you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Now we're gonna mix this up. it up just right please oh please Perfect. Thickened it up just right. And yes, we're definitely going to pipe this on if it'll work out for me. So we'll see. Tip isn't big enough. Stuck in there. Not sure the tip is going to be big enough. Nope, because it's coming off the edge now. screw these up. That's what I get for trying to be fancy. Because <laughs> I'm not fancy like that. <laughs> I mean, they look good, but I'm not sure I got enough to fill all the eggs. I might just make it Oh my goodness. God, please. Please. Please just work out for me. Okay, it's going to be just fine. the 
this one. This one will look way different. <laughs> Okay, can we cooperate, please? Why? I'm just going to try and press the rest of this down, maybe add a little bit to them, because they're not, they're not turning out very well, to be honest with you. Um, they're they're going to taste delicious. They just don't look all that great. But I'm going to make them look pretty. It'll be fine. Just do a little dab-dab on them. Like that. Give them that messy double dig look. That one's going to need a little more there. That one needs a little more. A little bit more in the bowl. We'll probably just barely have enough here. Let them all have that messy look, you know. Let's put a little dabbing some on the top. That one is really full. Look, look at the hole so big. That one might. That's one might. That looks like. That's what that makes that one look like. It needs more. That's what looks like. It needs more because the hole is bigger. All right, that's good enough. No, good enough. All right. So now we're just gonna top it. We'll call it a day. I like to put it in my hand because this always goes on me. So I like to sprinkle it. Then you get a nice spread, nice amount on there. You get less all over the white part of the egg. What of this we don't eat, it will go to my friend. If she does not make it, she may not make it. Because her brother and her brother's wife is coming over and their two kids. So, what's this one? But she's dog sitting for a friend. And, uh, yeah, she said, oh, yeah, you know him. And I'm like, I don't think so. Okay, so we get there, and I don't recognize either one of them. And then she starts telling the story about the one day that we all went to the casino or something like that. And she goes, you know, picked him up from the airport when she said that in the casino. Oh, that's who that guy is. I said, do you remember me now? Because I knew he didn't remember me either. I said, because I'm just now remembering you. And he goes... He goes, yeah, as soon as she said airport and casino, I remembered who you were. And I said, yeah, me too. I didn't even recognize you. He said, you look great, by the way. And you look happy. And he's in a really good place right now. So I'm happy for him. And, you know, I wish him all the best. That's for sure. They're like a cute couple. And his name, I, don't, yeah, I can't remember their names. Even if I did, I probably wouldn't say. But, yeah, he was in a really bad place when I met him. And so I was like, yeah, he's the kind of person I can take or leave. No big deal, right? Um, but he's a really nice guy overall. And now that he's in a good place, man, he looks healthy. He's happy. His dog is happy. I mean, I said, Madison, is that the same dog, really? She looks happy. 
Yes, and I absolutely, absolutely remember you now. I'm, I'm glad to see you're in a better place. You better yeah, me too. Because he was not in a good place. Yeah. And that was probably, I think it was 2017, I said, I believe we picked you up in my car, in this Jeep right here. And he goes, yeah, I think so. I said, I, had, I got this in February 2017, so it had to have been in 2017. Because he thought it was in 2016. I'm like, because I, I was thinking that as soon as I remembered who it is, I said, Oh, yeah, it was in my car with Big Jeff there. Yeah. All right, so how to do these dishes and finish up these eggs. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this pineapple open because I've been eyeballing it for days and I really want a piece of pineapple. And it's ready to be cut. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this parsley. Oh, and only because I love parsley. I absolutely love it. It's a very mild spice. Break it up a little bit. And I'm just going to put just a tad on each of these eggs. Just a little bit of green. Make them look pretty. You know. Okay. But I, what I don't want is big, long pieces of stem in my garnish. So if I go like that, that's what I'm doing. I'm tossing the little stems that I'm finding as I break it up. Oh, there's another piece of stem there. I don't want to scratch the egg anymore. It's already ch chipped. And, okay, but that does look good. It looks better with these little parts. And it's such a mild spice, it doesn't make it taste different. Not to me, anyway. <laughs> Stemmy there. Didn't quite take enough out the jar. Yeah, I think it makes them look very pretty. And again, even with with deviled eggs, you can make them taste however you want to make. You can put bacon in there. You can put, you know, whatever. My friend said, "Have you ever had this?" And I said, "No, I never have." I'm going to tell you what it is here in a second. I'm going to show you, and I'm going to try it. For the first time. So, she was over here the other day. She said, hey, can I finish up these deviled eggs? And I said, oh, please, yeah, we've had our fill of those. And, uh, it, was, it was probably a week or so ago. And she said, I don't know if you've ever tried this, but it's delicious. Have you ever? <laughs> Taking a grape, and I'm not going to cut it completely in half because these are very large grapes. I want kind of a normal size half of a grape. Because you take half a grape and you stick it on top of the deviled egg. I know, right? I said, doesn't it taste good? Doesn't it, well, it doesn't even sound good. I don't know how it tastes because I haven't tried it. But here I go. Should we try it together? She said it's delicious. I'll give it a try. <laughs> okay. I bit the grape in half too. different. Well, not bad, but definitely different. Mm, yeah, they're good. I would probably eat that once in a while. It's not as balmy as you get it out to be, but it looks good. Anyways, deviled eggs are complete. Don't those look delicious? All right. They're not my best, but they're good. And good is good enough for the eggs. That's pretty good though, the grape and the egg. How, who'd have thought? Who'd have thought that? Yeah, I'm gonna have to get 
this refrigerator just a tad bit more organized than what I have. It. Oh, and the other thing is the back of the refrigerator is freezing my stuff. Nice new appliances. Thanks, Bridget Air. Hmm. <laughs> I should have put that. I just bit my lip. Mm. Oh. And of course, the grape juices make it sting. Ow. Not bleeding, but it hurts. Oh, it is bleeding just a tad, just a touch. All right. So there's the deviled eggs are done and ready. Next is this pineapple. And I'm just going to grab the cutting board and, and start on it right now. Why not? I got nice sharp knives, so it should be easier to... Tossing on this is that box of plastic crap, so now it got dirty. I just set it over there to five minutes to go clean. Okay. <coughs> Get this pineapple going. And I'm gonna use this one. This will be a good one, right? You gotta be joking, right? Oh, I'm not gonna get much pineapple out of this thing. The way I'm having to carve it. They're really deep. It'll be fine though. Look at all that waste. I can't pick a good pineapple. Not to save my soul. Ow. Yeah, like, there, how much pineapple is actually left up there? Are you kidding me? It's a crappy ass fucking pineapple. God. Why? Like I said, I can't do anything right. It doesn't look... These things are just really deep. I don't recall them ever being that deep. I can actually get out of it before I continue to complain. <laughs> Maybe I'm not doing very good because I'm complaining about everything. That might be it. Doesn't want to let me cut it straight because it's <clears throat> it, it in your grip. I cut my nails off. Do anything and it seems really hard didn't it like it I don't know I'm gonna try it Let's see what it tastes like it's p 
pieces cleaned up some. Just, yeah. <laughs> yep, I did. This had um, olive oil in it and sitting up, sitting up there. So when I grabbed it, I spilled the olive oil all over my stove and my floor and my counter and my cabinet. I just wipe all this oil up. It's still dripping onto my floor and down the counter and the cabinet and the carpet <laughs> and all across the burner. Yep, now I got oil all over the burner and all over the stove. You know, the one I just cleaned. Yeah. I'm about this close to crying. I am. I'm having a rough time. Okay. And there's really not much pineapple left after you've cut off all those damn overgrown shit. Places, hard numbers. I'm not liking this one at all. The flavor's okay. Don't cut yourself there, Lisa. Good Lord. And it doesn't even want to let the core go. Like, you know, I've never had this much trouble. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm two seconds away from giving up the whole thing and calling it off. You know? Because now I gotta put half ass fucking food out there because this shit isn't working out for me. I can't stand that. I'm not even gonna attempt this. Like, really? To use the same side or the right side. Okay, so took a breath, cleaned up my mess, threw half the pineapple away, obviously. And I'm ready to try to finish this up. I'm going to try. Great. <laughs> Stuck in there. Great. I'm not going to worry about it. So, let's 
Look at these nasty pieces off first. Little core pieces that are going to the core of the tomato, or I mean the pineapple. All right, that's fine. Everything's going to be fine. Guys, I'm sorry I'm struggling so bad, but we're going to get through it. You know, 100% real life right here, right up in here. But the flavor is really good. So, I'm definitely happy with the flavor. But if I continue to drop all this on the floor, I am not going to get enough pineapple out of the pineapple. There we go. Add it out. Those are thick. Those are thick slices. It'll be fine. And then I want to keep a couple of these whole, these, maybe these two whole for the ham, right? So I'm just going to core it and leave them whole. Make sure I don't have any of those Sticks, stickers, the pineapple stickers. Don't you dare fly off this board. <laughs> Suction cupped. There we go. That's a good way to core a pineapple. And then I'm gonna, oh, they're just so thick. right there it'll be fine so there's some whole ones for the ham so big big slices slices for the ham. Perfect. Yep, see? The core is so much dense than the Oh, I, yeah, I tried to germinate some pineapple seeds. Yeah, but did not happen. There's a seed right there. I can see it in there. Those are huge seeds, too, my goodness. For pineapple seeds, they're big. Better. Mm -hmm. oh, paper thin. Yeah, some of them are really, really thick. Oh, I almost lost this one. I can't believe that. Let's get them cut and put them in the bowl. Like I said, come on now. Stop playing around. <laughs> oh, don't you dare fall on me. Ah. You're slippery.
for now, I'm going to leave them in this bowl and I'll get them laid out. I'm going to get the kitchen cleaned up because I'm cleaning as I go today. I don't want to end up with a bunch of dirty dishes. I'm going to need most of the dishes for tomorrow. We got four slices and that it'll be enough. I guess wasn't enough for that pineapple because it was like really not not all that great of pineapple. All this mess cleaned up. Alright. Thank you for joining me in my epic failures on trying to cook this Christmas dinner. <laughs> I'm trying, I really am. Some days you just don't have good days and you got to push on, right? And keep a smile on your face and giggle a little bit. The bad day might not seem so bad. <laughs> All right, I'll see you on the next video.